let's go faster everyone new chain rings and new cassette sets it doesn't matter what type of bicycle these are mounted on it doesn't matter if this one is a free hub or free wheel type cassette set the math works out exactly the same way in this video I'm gonna show you a complete gear train calculation exactly the same way as manufacturers themselves get it done to calculate the speed of the bicycle in every single gear that you have doesn't matter how many you have at the rear doesn't matter how many you have at the front the math will work as it's shown in this video the math will be in an Excel worksheet looking like this I am gonna explain what the columns mean I'm gonna explain what the rows mean I'm gonna explain what the color coding means but I'm not gonna explain this is not a tutorial in basic Excel I'm not gonna explain how Excel works the formulas will be given instead of writing the math out step by step the formulas will be given like this in cell referenced formulas that means that a formula such as this one up top here reads cell A2 multiplied by that's what the asterisk is cell A2 multiplied by open bracket cell B2 divided by cell C2 close bracket multiplied by cell F2 multiplied by 60 divided by a thousand to get your speed calculated it's a mouthful. I'm going to explain the concept that goes into the formula and I'm going to explain what numbers you need to populate your table with to get the calculation done. <clears throat> you need four batches or four groups of information to get started. What prompted this entire video is that I replaced my old chain rings to new ones because I wanted to go faster in some of the gears and I also wanted to go slower in the climbing gears so I both wanted to go faster and slower depending on the application or the gear and so I have new chain rings and a new cassette allowing me to do that and I wanted to know exactly what my speed is in every single gear and how much am I going faster or slower in any given speed or any given gear. So let's uh, go over what information is going into the input side of things to populate this table. I have my bicycle here set up to show you exactly that with the gear train on it is going to be highlighted here with that yellow sticky. What's important here and what's needed is information number one your tire circumference. Wrap your tire around with a fiberglass tape measure or a steel tape measure that's narrow and lies flat on the circumference of the tire. At a pressure and at a temperature you will be operating your tire at. So not out in the frozen cold, whatever. Okay, make sure it's at the right temperature and at the right pressure. This one runs at 80 psi, this is inflated at 80 psi, this has been measured at 80 psi and its circumference is 2203 millimeters or 2.203 meters. You can measure it in inches, if you like fractions make sure you measure it accurate to 132nd of an inch or in back, back to metric or accurate to one millimeter. This circumference of the tire works differently if you want to make out of inches miles per hour the formula is different I'm gonna just include the miles per hour formula based on inches in the videos description below separately so that's one extra formula for miles per hour so that's one set of information that you need your wheel circumference Whatever tire you use, they all fill up differently with air, they all expand differently, whatever rim you're using. However, number of wheels you're using, they will be all different, separate columns in an Excel worksheet, I'll show you. So that's one batch of information. The second batch of information, number of teeth on the cassette set for every single sprocket, the number of teeth are needed to be going into the Excel worksheet. You can see some of the numbers embossed into it. Like this one says 14 T, 14 teeth for this first sprocket here. 
the next one is illegible another one here says 18 behind it if you can see the 18 it's kind of 18 T whatever is kind of rusty so you might need to take a felt pen and painstakingly or carefully it doesn't have to be painful just count every single teeth on all of the sprockets that you have whether you have six or 11 I have 11 there whatever whatever number of sprockets you have and whatever number of teeth you have on it you have to count them they need to be in an Excel worksheet for this calculation to work so that's batch number two so tire sprocket all of them next one is your chain rings number of teeth on each chain ring however you have one two three how, as many as you have all of them all the numbers of the chain rings are also printed or embossed or engraved or whatever somehow indicated on some of them this one is 48 for the big one and 36 no 46 sorry 46 36 36 for the little guy on the new one here I have 50 for the big one and 34 for the little guy so those numbers is another batch of information going into Excel so one two three with all the teeth on all of the chain rings fourth batch of information is your RPM or your cadence RPM is if you start with your pedal in the 12 o'clock position or your crank arm go around slowly at the 3 o'clock position 6 o'clock position 9 o'clock position comes back to the 12 o'clock position this is one revolution one full turn one revolution if this is all you do in a minute that's one revolution per minute one rpm admittedly slow but this is the concept one rpm one full rotation in a minute okay if you're doing 60 of these in a minute you're doing 60 rpm I started my Excel table at 60 rpm a very low amount if you want to do 90 rpm or 95 or whatever your rpm is whatever your cadence is this is the same as concept of cadence whatever your cadence is or your range of cadences that you use enter them in the excel sheets i'll show you how they work very straightforward so that's the fourth batch of information that you need your cadence or rpm number now i want to explain with this setup here the bicycle is on lifted up on this handy dandy block of wood so the wheel is in the air I want to show you one thing about how these four batches of information work together to produce speed speed that is a predictable fixed mathematical certainty it does not depend on the weight of the rider it does not depend on how fast the air or the wind is blowing it doesn't matter if it's raining this is a fixed mathematical certainty and this is how it works and this is why it doesn't matter how much the rider weighs the number of rotations on the crank arm this is why we start here in the 12 o'clock position on the crank arm the direct number of rotations on this one will result in a mathematically predictable repeatable fixed number of rotations on the wheel due to the circumference of the wheel you're gonna get a fixed number of distance traveled based on your input RPM so RPM is the input it goes through a gear reduction through your transmission here which is your chain rings and sprocket and you're gonna get a fixed number of rotations which equates to a fixed distance the wheel travels again it doesn't matter what the wind is if you are able to push this pedal say 60 times in a minute in any wind or any condition then you will be doing 60 rpms in the pedal and it's going to produce a fixed predictable math result for how much this wheel travels forward of course if it's very windy or i don't know you bicycle in a gale and then you're not going to be traveling at 60 rpm for your input you are not going to be at 56 55 or 30 whatever okay you're going to, you're going to be traveling slower because your rpm will be slower okay so wind is a factor as in effort 
but if your if your RPM here is whatever given number based on your fitness, your condition, your weight, the gear you're carrying, whatever your input here for the gear train, you're gonna get a fixed predictable result out of it at the rear wheel. Let me just show you how these work together, very straightforward. I'm gonna just rotate the wheel. So 12 o'clock position here, valve stem, also 12 o'clock position, yellow sticky, also 12 o'clock position. The yellow sticky and the valve stem will travel together throughout the entire range because the cassette set is fixed in relation to the position of the rim. This rotates once, this rotates once, always. Not when it's freewheeling backwards, when it's being driven forwards. So, the yellow sticky is just simply stuck on the back side of the largest sprocket. And if I rotate it forward, they turn together throughout the entire circle. Right now, you can see I have rotated the pedal three quarter turn forward, and it resulted in one full turn on the wheel. So, at this point, this is a three quarter to one ratio. And with this one full turn, the bicycle traveled forward 2.203 meters because it's got yay size of tire on it. If you have a different tire, of course, the distance changes accordingly. Smaller tire, bigger tire, whatever. But it's always a 3 quarter to 1 ratio. Now, 3 quarter to 1 ratio is not a nice ratio. I want two whole numbers for both of them. So, work with me on this one for a sec. If I make one full turn here, the wheel rotates one and a quarter. The quarter is an easy number to work with because four of them will make another full rotation. So the, right now we are at one and one and a quarter. It's still, I want still two whole numbers ideally, nothing else. So if I rotate one more time with the pedal, You'll see the valve stem comes to a stop at the six o'clock position down there. So that's two and a half. Two rotations to two and a half. Three full root rotations, and the valve stem is in the nine o'clock position. We're making progress. So it's three to three and a quarters. And the last one here is four full rotations here and the yellow sticky shows you the valve stem is back in the 12 o'clock position. It's not exactly, it's kind of, it's just, just a teensy bit, oh, whatever, you just work with this. Four rotations here produces five rotations there. It's a fixed four to five ratio. That means that if your RPM is four, four revolutions, is that's all you do in a minute. Say it's windy, whatever. That's why it doesn't depend on the wind or the weight or the luggage or anything. If your muscle output is 4 RPM, 4 revolutions in 1 minute, the bicycle will travel forward in this gear exactly 5 times the circumference of the tire, which is 2.203 times 5, 11 meters in a minute whatever that equals in an hour times it by 60. That many meters or whatever, convert it to kilometer, that's what Excel can do for you. Very easy. So I hope this makes sense. This is a 4 to 5 ratio in this particular gear and it doesn't depend on any other factor. Okay. I just want to show you one more thing. That it's not exactly 4 to 5 because it's just, just off a teensy bit, just, just that much off, just a little bit. The actual ratio, because we are on the second largest chain ring here at the rear, and the second largest chain, uh, sorry, uh, sprocket here at the rear, and the second largest sprocket has 27 teeth, and the chain at the front is on the chain ring with 34 teeth, the actual ratio is not 4 to 5, the actual ratio is 27 to 34. Now, let me convert the 4 to 5, or 4 over 5, to a decimal here. I don't need a calculator for that. It's obviously 0 0.4 to 5, wrong number, is obviously 0 0.8. But the 27 to 34 is a fraction that doesn't reduce to lowest terms because it, they don't have a common denominator. So 27 converted to 
27 over 34 converted to decimal is almost 0 0.8, but not quite. So that's why it's just a, just a little bit, if I can show you this, just a little bit off. It's not exactly, you know, five full rotations, but very nearly. So instead of the 4 to 5 ratio, which is good for the concept, it's mathematically an exactly 27 over 34 ratio. And that's why you need all of the teeth, gear teeth numbers for every single sprocket on the cassette set and all the teeth for all of the chainings that you have to get this math done. Now let me change gears. I'm going to try to drop the chain on one of the sprockets that have exactly 17 teeth. Give me here a sec. I think it's three gears down. It's looking good. Okay, in this situation here, let me just get this back to 12 o'clock position. All right, we so ended up that when the pedal is at 12 o'clock position, the valve stem and the sticky that you can see is in the 6 o'clock position now. This is 17 teeth at the rear and 34 teeth over here. 17 to 34 is a fraction that reduces to lower terms because 17 is exactly half of 34. So 17 over 34 reduces to 1 over 2. And this is a 1 over 2 ratio, fixed ratio. That means for every full rotation of the crank, I will get two rotations on the wheel. Let's put this theory to test here. If I'm indeed on the 17 tooth, uh, actually I'm gonna go one more gear down, I'm on the 19. Just give me a sec. Now I'm on the 17. I'm gonna align it back to the 12 o'clock position here. And I'm gonna line up my uh, valve stem with the sticky. There. Let's start this in this 5 o'clock position, something like that. So this one is in the 12 o'clock position. Now I'm on the, yeah, definitely on the sprocket that has 17 teeth. So now this will work exactly a 1 to 2 ratio. I go around half a turn on the pedal. We're back exactly in the same position already, one full turn. It's easy to see when I complete the second turn. But when I complete the second half of the turn, the wheel has turned around twice. This is an exact 1 to 2 ratio. 17 over 34 is the same as 1 over 2. So this is the concept behind the gear train calculation. Okay, I hope this makes sense. The So wind, weight, fitness of the rider doesn't matter. If you turn around this crank twice in a minute, your speed will be a fixed mathematical number if you are able to turn this crank twice in a minute, whatever, what, no, any, any number of time, you, you pick one. So this is just for the concept overview. The only thing that lessens, that modifies the calculation is wheel slip. If you are going in snow or ice or wet surface with significant amount of slip, then your calculation will be off due to the wheel slip, but that's like on ice, so don't, I'm not considering that at the moment. Just dry conditions, dry roads, or slightly wet roads, okay? Not on ice, so. And not bald tires on ice, okay? So the surface, uh, yeah, the surface friction between tire and road, wheel slip is the only thing that can compromise this calculation, nothing else. So let's go back to the Excel and show you how this works when it's put into these tables. The first column here, I'm gonna go column by column. The first one is highlighted and is your cadence number or RPM number. Like I said, I started with 60, for the down I have 70, but you can change them to any number you like, say 95, you just put in 95 and Excel will do the calculation for you here in column G, the speed number where it appears 13.22 at the moment. When I hit enter, watch the update, 13.22 uh, will be replaced by a new number, that number, because the RPM number was changed to 95. Let's change it back to 60 and the speed number in 
the 20.93 will be replaced here with the 13.22, just like so. We're back to where we started. So any numbers, any of the numbers that need to be changed, very easy. Excel will do the math for you. Again, the formula for calculating this speed here needs four pieces of information. Your RPM. Oh, I forgot to mention. You can measure your RPM how many times your knees are just pick the left knee or the right knee, whatever, how many times your right knee rises in a minute. Tick tock, tick tock, so you're gonna need a watch. If you don't have any digitized version or automated version to measure your RPM with instrumentation, then you're gonna have to do a count yourself. So just count how many times your right knee or left knee, whatever, pick one, rises when you're going at your usual pace, at your usual cadence you will have a rough idea about your cadence. Of course it varies for everybody whether you're climbing, grinding or spinning, whatever, but it usually is between 60 and 100, just in rough terms. So that's your cadence number, the first column. Second column is my new chain ring number. The number of teeth on my bigger chain ring is 50. why this number 50 is entered here 11 times is because I have 11 speeds, 11 gears at the back. So I have the 50 repeated here 11 times and then the 34 for the smaller chain ring repeated 11 times. On the ne in the next column, in column C, I have all of the gear teeth for the cassette for the rear. So the first sprocket has 30 teeth, the biggest one. The next one has 27, that's what the chain was on when we started with the demo. The next one has 24, 21, whatever, you can see the numbers all the way down to 11. 11 is my smallest sprocket there. So that's how this looks like and then it's repeated starting with 30 right, the column continues down right next to the 34. The meaning of this is that the bicycle can be in gear in an arrangement that the 50, just pretend this one has 50 teeth, that the largest train, chain ring is connected with the chain because this doesn't shift sideways, the chain connects the two of them. The largest of uh, the chain rings is connected to the largest of the sprockets at the rear. So that's why 50 with the 30. And then you move the shift down, you move the chain from here to one down to the 27. So you have a 50 and a 27 connected with the chain. Then the 50 and the 24, the 50 with the 21, you get the idea. That's what you see here. Finally, 50 with the 11, the chain is on the biggest chain ring and to the, on the smallest sprocket on the cassette set. 50 and 11. Why the 50 and 11 are red? and these ones are black and then these four here are red is due to cross chaining. Cross chaining means that the chain rings on a bicycle, two, three of them are usually lined up with the middle-ish of the cassette set below or in this case below. So that means that the, in order for the chain to reach either the smaller or smallest uh, sprocket or the largest sprocket on the cassette set, the chain needs to take an angle. So if the chain is on an angle this way or this way, it's called cross chaining and it's not a really efficient way to run the chains. Due to the added friction, it needs added power to produce the 60 RPMs or whatever RPM that you want to be going at. So that's why these are in red, because they are impractical. It's impractical to connect the biggest chain ring with the biggest sprocket on the rear. Same for these. The first four are really impractical. Likewise, the fastest gear, 50 and 11, this is when the bicycle goes the fastest, but due to the cross chaining, it's not really an efficient, the friction, due to the friction, it's not really an efficient gear. For designers and engineers, given the target speed that you're aiming for, the cross-chaining needs to be minimized. So the gear ratio that you want to be, that depending on what speed you want to hit, 
the gear ratio that you want to hit needs to be in a reasonably well aligned range of the cassette set and that's how they design the cassette sets that uh, given the desired speed that they want to get out with the chain not cross chaining in the meanwhile or in the process so if you have to cross chain for a kilometer or whatever for a short amount of time sure it will work for an entire race or a trip or whatever but if you have to do cross chaining for extended periods of time it's killing time it's making extra friction and it's bleeding or losing time from the racer not efficient so that's what you see in column C the numbers from 30 to 11 with the big chain ring and numbers 30 to 11 again with the small chain ring the same repeats with the old chain ring which is 46 on the big and 36 on the small you see the 36 small got replaced by a 34 even smaller chain ring because I wanted to go slower in climbing gears and the 46 got replaced by 50 because I wanted to go faster in the fastest gears. So the speed is calculated here by using these four numbers RPM, the chain ring number, number of teeth there, number of teeth here on the cassette, whichever it is, to calculate this speed. So these are the four numbers one, two, three, oh, and wheel size, number four, to get this number and you can see it from the formula here these are the four numbers in cell block A2, B2, C2 and F2 to calculate the speed the same applies to calculating my new, my old speed with my old chain ring and old cassette my old cassette has 11 to 28 speeds so you can see the same logical layout 11 to 28 and in every gear the speed is calculated the speeds formula is this follows the same logic a2 d2 e2 and f2 are referenced in it for cells and the old speeds are here in column i and the new speeds are here in column g you can see by comparing the two that i'm going faster in every single gear with my new setup and with my smaller chain rings in the slow gears I'm going slower in every single gear consistently that's what I wanted you can see these percentage numbers the percentage numbers are calculated within each gear within the new setup here so 14.69 is 11 percent faster than 13.22 this is G3 this is G2 you can see these percentage formula calculations here G3 and G2 are in this formula here to get the percentages because I wanted to know how much faster am I going in every single speed here so about 10% faster just roughly you can see it's between 7 and 14 the same is repeated in column J for my old gear train in my old gear train I also went between 7 and 12% about the same I don't know 10% faster in every gear that's nice or slower depending on the setup uh, last batch of numbers here new versus old in terms of percentage because the speeds are like I said directly compared from I between I and G those are the speeds but in times of in terms of percentage 13.22 is 1.45 percent more than 13.03 so these percentage numbers here come out of this last formula where G2 and I2 are the cells that are referenced here in this setup so G2 and I2 to produce these numbers and you can see I'm going faster in every gear here with percentages about 8.7 where it matters faster and about 5.5 percent slower in every gear where it matters to go slower so the oopsie. so I am going slower here where I want it to and I'm going faster here where I want it to so that's how a gear train calculation looks like that's all the thought that goes into it you can repeat it with your numbers fairly easily if you know how to make Excel work for you this is what goes into it Thank you very much for watching.